right, welcome back. I have Brian Sullivan here with me today. Um, we were just discussing your most recent issue with Frontier. Is there other things that you've encountered that you'd like to talk about with Frontier? Yeah, I, and I think it's kind of a District 6 problem too. But my daughter was being bullied at school. And uh, it was by a boy. And he was kind of just going up behind her and knocking her knees out. And, you know, he'd kick her once in a while. And, you know, she didn't like it. She reported it. And I went into the school and let them know I knew about it. And I talked to an assistant principal and a Title IX coordinator, too, Jackie Schmidt, that was at Frontier. I told Claire, if any, in any situation, if any student, boy, girl, whatever, had started something with her and had thrown the first punch and got into a physical altercation, that she had my blessing to defend herself. I was told by Mrs. Schmidt that if she defended herself physically, that she would get the same repercussion that the boy or girl who started it. And I, I thought, really? For defending yourself? You're, you're going to punish someone. You're going to punish a little girl. And what kind of message is that sending? That you can't stand up for yourself, that you can't defend yourself. You're going to sit there and you're going to get beat up. You're going to get, you know, whatever punishment they're going to deal out, and you're going to sit there and take it because you're going to get punished. So You're absolutely correct. Um, this is an issue in dis District 6. It's also just a nationwide issue as well. And I can't help but put my um, tinfoil hat on. I don't know if you realize this, but I have one I love. I should actually <laughs> set it down here. If you think about it, if you're teaching kids that they can't stand up and defend themselves, doesn't that allow the state, the government, the federal government to come in and tell you what to do? And you have yep. to sit down and shut up and take it. You're easier to control. Yep. If they kill that spirit in you to say, wait a minute, no, this is wrong. And I am going to protect myself. And, it, you know, if they say, well, you're going to get the same punishment. That's that's absolutely mind blowing, especially because they tell you to turn the other cheek. Oh, just ignore it. Just walk away. Right. I have two brothers, and they would pick on me relentlessly, and I would respond every single time. And my mom would be like, oh, they're just trying to get a rise out of you. Just stick right. with them and walk away. Well, you can only do that so many times, so long, yep. before you finally say, listen, here, we're not doing this. I'm not putting up with this. And, yep. I mean, from my fighting with my brothers, it gave me a mentality that I don't back down really to anybody. Right. Um, it, and if you get in my face, I'm going to get in your face too. I was in my early 20s when I finally started to go, maybe I can't resolve issues by just punching them in the face, you know? I mean, they learn not to mess with you, but also right. like there really right. isn't actual resolution with that. Um, but when we teach kids to walk away and ignore it, we're not helping the situation. Yeah. I've, I've told both my kids, you know, you, you talk about it first. You try and resolve it with words first. But I said, if you can't, you go report it. And if you can, it keeps happening. Then, and worse comes to worse, then yes, you defend yourself. You know, back in my day, it, it was you you cursed at each other and, yeah. you know, you called each other out and blah, blah, blah. And, and at the end of the school day, it was, let's go. It, it's go time. Yeah. And you solved it. And majority of the time you walked away you shook hands and you were friends the next day yeah greeley west had a gossip page on instagram unfortunately unfortunately sure it's been taken down but they would post their fights on there and i would watch them because i i would be like making sure that my one my kids weren't the ones standing around <laughs> right. filming it like no 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 like you guys could be like oh dang there's a fight that's crazy and then walk away go to class don't be involved don't hang out too long uh, but there was, I mean, there was a couple of fights where no teachers came running. I was like, good, let them duke it out because they did. They just ended up walking away at the end of it. And, and that was it. There was, there was no continuation. There was no further fights, no further issues. It was like, this is what happened. And then that's what we did at school too. At our school, there was a sidewalk on one side, it was school property. And on the other side, it was a city park. 
you just stepped onto that grass and let's go because then you were charged with fighting on school grounds. <laughs> but I mean, that's where you had to take care of things. You learn life. Then, yeah. yeah, they don't they don't let them learn life. They're they're guided through life. Well, and so the. They're guided through life in regards to protecting themselves and standing up for themselves, but then they're overly exposed to unhealthy sexual relationships and romantic relationships. And it's it's kind of weird when they decide to get involved and when they don't want to get involved. Because, you know, say a student wants to identify as non-binary or trans or that is empowering, but if I want to identify as someone who's going to stand up for myself, no, 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 don't do that. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's very much who they choose uh, or what they choose the path is going to be. Um, I also did have another problem in the school with, with my daughter, Claire. One of her teachers, Mr. Duval, was uh, going over what they call love languages. And... Uh, I'm familiar with it. Uh, I, I read the book a little bit, um, but I don't believe love language should be in school. It's not really an academic. What grade was this? Uh, this was just this year. So, yeah, she was 14 years old and still a minor. Yeah. They wanted to know what is the student's love language, and we're talking about 14-ish, give or take, boys and girls, what their love language was. And, and then the teacher wanted to know specifically if the kids remembered what Mr. Duval's love language was. That's creepy. Yeah, very. It's awkward. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's not normal. It's not, it's not anything academic that is shared. I don't believe it. This is my own personal belief. I don't believe a student should know a teacher's political views, sexual views. And most definitely not their love language. That's right. grooming. That's, yes. That's creepy. Yes. It's it's sad and and uh, all at the same time because my question was, what what is the teacher going to do with this information? I mean, once you learn it, you're not going to unlearn it. You're not going to unsee it. They even asked not only what the student's love language was, but... What is your parents' love language or whoever was taking care of them, what their love language was? It wasn't just directed. They wanted to know the whole family's love language. What class was this for? It was in health. So they're disguising it as a health section. I guess, it's, and like the other thing I guess that I'm kind of hung up on is, is like, okay, so the love languages are like words of affirmation, right. um, physical touch gift giving mm -hmm. and, and, and and intimacy acts and yeah yeah so like yeah. okay how many 14 year olds i'm like i definitely love to touch people that's right like we well wait a minute they shouldn't really know that yet they shouldn't right. be at that point yet let's talk about instead what kind of a learner are you do you learn from hands-on do you learn from watching do you you know audio visual like why are we not doing that so with that we can help teach these kids how to format their high school education the best way that they're going to learn from as opposed to learning about relationships and how right. how they're going to act in that aspect. Yeah, it, it was rather disturbing. They, all, they also focused on a bit of it on they wanted to know their opinion about breakups and that kind of realm, boyfriend, girlfriend, breakups. And I'm like, what does this have to do with any kind of health? Even if they disguise it as a health class, what does it have to do with academics in, in a school function? By any chance, did they talk about um, unhealthy relationships? Do you know? Uh, I don't know because I wasn't privy to the class. I'll, of course not. I got this, yeah. I got this after the fact. I got this as a homework assignment that was done. So I was curious, and I went in and looked at it and then got in touch with the principal and the teacher. So this was after the fact. I had no idea this was going on. And this is why the parents don't, don't uh, speak up about anything because they don't know what's going on in these classes. 
Exactly. You know, you can ask your kids all day long, you know, what did you learn in class? Well, you know, what happened? And what did you talk about? Fine. And, good. Yeah, exactly. I don't remember. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah. My daughter's favorite is, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> so it was bad. No, it was okay. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, that's so descriptive and clarifying. Well, I think the reason I asked, though, is one of the issues is in the United States, and, and I'm trying to go off of memory of after a couple of months, it's something like one million students across the country suffer from domestic violence, whether it's physical, emotional, verbal, or sexual. Last summer, we had a 15-year-old who was murdered by her 17-year-old boyfriend because she tried to break up with him. That's right. I remember. Uh, he shot up her trailer, and then he got into the trailer, and he went and found her and executed her in front of her little brother. Mm. If we're going to be talking about love languages and stuff, are we teaching them about, you know, signs to look out for? Because I know when I was in high school, we were not being taught that at all. No. Um, we were not being taught about, you know, some of the scary situations that can happen that would not only lead to um, like domestic violence, but also self-harm and suicide. I had friends who, you know, tried to overdose, who tried to take their lives because their boyfriends were controlling and abusive to them and didn't know any other way to get out of it. And so it's like, we have all of this information, all of this data. Look at you know, look at how far we've come. Why are we focusing on love languages and not focusing on if he needs to know where you are at all time, red flag, or she, I shouldn't say just for <laughs> one side. I mean, it definitely goes both ways. Right. Are we teaching some of these other fundamental things to help, you know? If you are in an abusive relationship, these are some things that you can do to help protect yourself. These are some services that are available, you know, kind of things. And educating our children that way, because that's going to be more prevalent. Right. That's, that's going to be more important in the long run. Yeah. It's the sensitizing of our youth. Uh, well, and just not the youth, but Americans as, as a whole. It, you know, you see so much of it everywhere. It, it's hard to contain. I mean, your kids have cell phones. They see all this stuff. It, it's, it's horrible from what we grew up in. I mean, yeah, it, it's just a desensitizing of, of everything that. Well, and you know, like you're talking about having cell phones, it, it's just understanding that what the kids have access to as well and what they're doing with it because. Mm -hmm. They're not using it just to pay, to just to play Pokemon Go or anything like that. Like there's there's more to it, and we aren't preparing our children to interact. And they're still, no matter how much we desensitize them, and no matter how much we try to make them grow up, they're still naive kids yep. that are still not going to know any better and still willing to make bad choices. And we're not preparing them in the best way possible in regards to talking about, you know, love languages is, you know, talking about how to be encouraged in saying no, how to, right. you, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, and not feeling that pressure to um, give way to, you know, whatever sexual acts or drug use or anything along those lines. How do we encourage our kids, empower our kids to say no to this stuff as opposed to, I like gifts, you know? Right. Yeah, I, I really try and talk to my kids, even though they don't like it. <laughs> they don't like to hear the parents' speeches all the time. But my kids spend eight-plus hours at school. Uh, a lot of times under teachers and administrators, I don't know. I don't know what their background is. So, yeah, I ask a lot of questions. I go to the school. I sit in in classes. Uh, and it's my job as a parent to to right the wrongs that I see going on in the school. Uh, if it doesn't fit my values, I tell my kids, you know, this isn't right. You, you may be seeing it and hearing it from your, your teachers or your administrators, but, you know, a lot of this stuff isn't right. It's not morally right. Use your brain. Use your critical thinking skills. Is this right or wrong? Yeah. Well, you know, it, does it sit well with you? Does it make you think something's not quite right here? And if so, then, okay, let's, capitalize on that let's let's you know spend more time thinking about that and trying to assess the situation maybe say no 
dad. This was said today. Like, is this right? Just because that's the teacher doesn't mean whatever comes out of their mouth is the God-given truth. Like, yep. there's probably more to it construed in a different way or you know, something along those lines. And I think that's where a lot of the schools, they're teaching. I've sat in some classes and they are teaching some things, but their time is so limited that they kind of just gloss over. They give you the highlights of, well, this happened in 1965, this happened in 19, or 1876, but they don't give you the backstory. They don't give you the buildup. They don't give you the history of, of the decision or whatever they're talking about. They hit the high points and the points that kind of go along with the school narrative. Yeah. I think it's the left narrative. Um, I'm okay with teaching history and i love history but you've got to teach the entire history you can't just cherry pick yeah what's out there and i see a lot of that i've seen it in personally in, in some of these classes that my kids have taken well and they act like when we say that that we're meaning let's not talk about slavery no let's talk about yes. it let's be real and honest about it but let's not lie and say thomas jefferson was racist because he had slaves and he was raping them like no 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 wait a minute here like right we can't just you know like and, and we don't want to just pick the stuff that makes americans look bad i mean right. we've done a lot of amazing things even if we go back to the slavery with black people fighting you know along during the civil war yep. why are we not highlighting that more uh -huh. you know and and, and talking about that Instead, we just say, you know, white people are bad, and right. that's the end of that conversation. Yeah, I, I find that really interesting because I, I like the Civil War era. I like the Revolutionary War era, and they don't talk about a lot about that. They hit the highlights, like Martin Luther King. They talk about slavery in general, but they don't ever go in depth and, and go into what the Founding Fathers had to go through to, to get us laws, to get us a government, to get us when slavery was there and it was a very touchy subject. How, how do you raise a nation out of all that? There, there's more than just what they're teaching. There, there's a whole history behind it. Well, and they talk about how slavery in America was bad and Americans were the worst, but yeah. they don't talk about that children in African countries are actually learning that the worst slave trade was the European slave trade, not the transatlantic. And also because I personally was in college, a freshman in college, when I learned this, that a lot of the people that were selling the slaves to the Europeans or the Americans were black people themselves that were selling prisoners of war so like well, hey let's talk about that like when i found that out i was like what like right? what yeah but they don't they don't want to talk about that they don't address no. any of that stuff no and, and they should it, it's very interesting the good and the bad and the ugly of, of everything it's interesting i mean i i never really knew too much about like say the buffalo soldiers i never knew what they were who they were what time i just i heard buffalo soldiers once in a while but you never heard anything about it you, you know, it, it was quite interesting. You, history has so much to offer, but they're kind of cheating our kids um, about everything. You, you teach them everything, not just cherry picking what fits your narrative. One of the things that I was thinking about, we don't talk about, is the Tuskegee. Tuskegee Airmen. Airmen, or even the experiments, you know, that they did on them. Yep. Um, that's That was something that was really interesting for me to learn about and and i learned about it from my husband because when he's in the air force and when it came time for him to take the covid vaccine he said no good for him i'm not doing it his original exemption packet i think he said was over a couple hundred pages because he was like let's talk about all of the reasons why i don't trust the government wow. yeah. and, and he cited that and he cited what you know um everything how the U.S. government violated the Nuremberg Code hmm. just a couple of years after signing it into into place. And these are things that we're not teaching our kids. Right. You know, instead, we're teaching them Thomas Jefferson is a rapist. It's way more important for us to all know. <laughs> right. 
instead of giving us a good healthy dose of distrust for the government kind of a thing yep. that they have.